Hey, Jesus fans, welcome to True North Podcast, where we grow closer to God together. This podcast was brought to you by Solid Rock Church in Irving, Texas, and our host, Pastor Ed Snyder. To find out more about this podcast, visit our website at truenorthdfw.org. Now let's join Pastor Snyder in a new direction and a new destination. Hey everybody, welcome back to True North Podcast. We're excited that you've joined us again for another great episode. We are so excited. We have been rated as the top five podcast in the country by Apostolic Review. We're so proud of that and of course, thankful. Got a great segment ahead of us, so grab something to take some notes with, get you a cup of coffee. We'll be right back. Okay, we are back. Man, has it been a great set of holidays. Of course, uh, been away a little bit, had a heart attack had Omicron or however way you pronounce that, a little bit more of the COVID situation, but God has brought us through it. We're pretty excited. Got some great things happening in the Snyder family. Snyder family is getting ready to expand by the fact that our son is getting married on the 22nd. We're so incredibly proud of what God is doing in his life. We are gaining a tremendous daughter-in-law and uh, very excited of what they're going to do in ministry. So uh, great things are happening. We're excited about what God is doing. I know the world is getting a little crazy out there, but God is still in control. So today we're going to enter in to a um, series, if you please. We're going to be talking about the pursuit of purpose. Purpose is something that we all desire. What is our purpose? What do we uh, accomplish? What are we, What are we supposed to be doing in life what is my purpose? And of course, the only way we're going to find out what our purpose is, is that we pursue, that we pursue something, that we pray, we fast, we seek God, uh, we talk to mentors, uh, elders, and and just kind of feel it out. But we're going we're gonna to get into this here, and over the next several weeks, we're going to be talking about this subject of pursuit of purpose. And of course, in enabling us to pursue our purpose, we have to do a reset. You know, if, if things are not working as they should in our life, then we need to take a look at our life, you know, what's happening. One of the main ingredients, or actually the two main ingredients that we need to strive for and do everything we can to obtain is one the blessing of the Lord in our life. Do, are we blessed? Is God blessing us? I know a, a lot of people, when you say, how are you doing? I'm blessed. Well, are you really? I mean, is God really blessing your life? That's a question that needs to be answered. The second ingredient that we need in our life is, are we having the favor of God in our life? There's a difference between blessing and favor. And so the favor of God is, is doesn't matter what's going on. Our world can be crashing down, but we come out on the winning side. We have the favor of God. No matter what kind of challenges that we face each and every day, we come out on the winning side. Job had the favor of God. Noah had the favor of God. Throughout the Bible, there are men and women who had the favor of God, being blessed is one thing. Having the favor of God in your life is a whole nother, another realm. It's another atmosphere, another place that we need to get to because when trials come, you know, the Bible says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Well, you know, could we look at that as the favor of God in our life that anytime the enemy tries to attack or, or, Life just happens. You know, there's situations where the devil, uh, the situations in our Bible are in our life that the devil has nothing to do with. It's just life. It's just circumstances. It's just some goofball trying to be, or not trying to be, but acting stupid, and we're caught in the middle. And so there are situations of that. Life happens, 
and then, of course, the attacks of the enemy. But again, we always come out on the winning side. We have an answer. Uh, Or the situation goes south on us, and there's some pain, of course, inflicted emotionally, hopefully not physically. But that is, you know, what, what the enemy came in as evil, God meant for it to be good. I've been through some stuff, as well as you have been through some stuff, some very painful things that I have personally experienced, but I noticed something. My anointing got deeper. My relationship got stronger with Christ, and I became wiser through all of those things. So therefore, could that not be considered the favor of God? So we need to look at our life, and if we're not having the blessing and the favor of God flowing in our life, then maybe we need to take a look at what's going on in our life, and maybe we need a reset. Maybe we need to look at some situations that's going on in our life and say, okay, I need to change this. Now, I'm not calling you the biggest, baddest, filthy sinner. Um, I'm not calling you backslid. But think, dig down into your spirit, dig down into your heart, your mind, your soul. Are you praying like you should? Are you reading your Bible like you should? Are you studying the doctrine of God like you should? And so we need to maybe look at some things and reset. Are we, uh, are, is our attitude in line with what God wants us to be? Are we being Christ-like. So again, depending on the answers to those questions, we may need a reset. Let's go to scripture, and we're going to begin this little series on pursuit of purpose from Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 12. The former account I made, O uh, Theolophus, that of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taking up after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days of and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, here we go, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, here we are, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days hence. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, if it is not for you to know the times nor the seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, now this is my favorite, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taking up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, he went up, and behold, two men stood by them in white apparel who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing into the heaven? The same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. So here is the introduction of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost upon mankind. Here is a promise, ye shall be endued with power after that you've received the Holy Ghost. So here is these disciples, these men of God, these 12 that were chosen and trained by Christ himself, is saying, I got one more thing for you. 
I have poured word into you. Now you need power. Now you need spirit. And they were headed to Jerusalem, if I can term it this way, for a reset. Their lives are getting, is getting ready to change because it's one thing knowing the word. It's one thing living the word. It's one thing feeling the word. It's one thing uh, experiencing the baptism of the Holy Ghost and that anointing and power and blessing that comes with us or with it. Now, here's something that we, we've got to realize here today. God specializes in resetting. Throughout the scriptures, we see God resetting his people. We see it from Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. We see it with Noah and with Moses. The crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus, a reset, an absolute game changer. So resetting is what God does best. And the good news is the resetting is always for our benefit and for his glory, okay? That's one thing that we've got to really, it's important that we understand this. Resetting is what God does best. And the great news is resetting is always for our benefit. God cares about you. Now, I, you know, I, I like to address and talk to people that perhaps are listening to this podcast that needs to add to what they already have in their relationship with God. I also like to think that in our listening audience, and by the way, thank you to all of you who are listening today to this podcast. We appreciate our, our listener family, our listener base but I also like to think that in, in the listening audience are people perhaps that has not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and needs to start their relationship with God. Whatever that is, that's a reset. And of course, I'm, I know I'm speaking because I've heard from you in our listening audience that you're full of the Holy Ghost, you're baptized in Jesus' name, you're living for God, you're listening to this podcast as a source of encouragement, a source of growth in which we dearly thank you for listening today. But resetting is always a needful thing no matter what level our relationship is with God. We can always do better. We can always do better. So the benefit is always ours when God starts a reset, and it's always for the glory of God. Now, Sometimes the opportunity to reset is grace. Our struggle is that we always want to go back to the familiar instead of into the unknown. Now that's where it gets scary. You know, fear is produced from the unknown. What we don't know that is ahead of us. The Bible says in the last days men's hearts are going to fail them because of fear. Why? Because there's so many very complex situations that that humanity doesn't know how to figure out you know and it and and of course they become afraid and to the point that our our hearts fail and so again fear is based on the unknown but the struggle really lays in the fact that we always want to go back what we've always done. You know the saying, if you always do what you've always done, you will always get what you've always gotten. So folks, we got to step out of the comfort zone today. We have got to step into the unknown, into the spirit realm, into the areas that God is calling us to. We need to pursue our purpose. But you see, resets are not not about going back to the normal comforts of what we knew, but instead a reset puts things back to the way they are supposed to be. Okay, let me, let me hit that one more time. We've got to realize that resets are not about going back to the normal comforts. You know, again, going back to what we've always done, what we always know. It resets. It's about putting things back uh, to the way they should be. They're supposed to be. We're supposed to be a prayer warrior. We're supposed to be a soul winner. We're supposed to be somebody that's rock solid 
and, and operating in the anointing and perhaps even the gifts of the Spirit. So as followers of Jesus, we have to move in the direction that God is leading us instead of moving back to where we used to be, we have to reset our mindset. We have to reset not just the heart, but the mind. We cannot depend on the emotions. We cannot depend on what we feel because the Bible says the heart is deceitfully wicked and who can trust it? You have to go on knowing. And the way you know is that you study the word of God. David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. But that comes through the mind. When we read and study, we put it in our mind. When we put it in our mind, it becomes an emotion. And so we have to have that reset. And and what if we were as intentional about the community we help create outside the church as we were cultivating within the church? Okay, that's a very, very important question I just dropped there. And again, here it comes again. What if we were as intentional about the community we help create outside the church as we were or are cultivating within the church? You know, all those friends outside the church. Now, nothing wrong with having good friends. That's how that's how we influence and win people to Christ. However, That base that you need, that foundation that you need is within the church, not the world. So we need to get back to where we are a first century church in the 21st century. What does that mean? Well, I'll tell you what it doesn't mean, and that means compromise. We can't compromise the things that God has given to us. But we also have to realize we need that first century power. We need that first century anointing. We need that first century fellowship and binding together in the 21st century. They said of of the early church, these that have turned the world upside down have come. Do you realize that the apostles, the disciples, those that were in the early church, They prayed, they fasted, they sought God, they cultivated a community that's within the church that was so powerful that when they came to a town, they were recognized as these that have turned the world upside down have come. Is that what the world is saying about us today? Is that how or who we are recognized as These that have turned the world upside down, maybe we need a reset so that we can get there. Folks, here's, here's a reality check. We need to return to a strong discipline of prayer and fasting. Study the book of Acts. Study the early church. Study what their habits were, and you'll find it was based on prayer, fasting, study, and fellowship. The Bible says miracles, signs, and wonders follow them that believe. Okay? We need the faith. We need to have the faith to believe in miracles. You see, miracles is something that cannot be explained by law, by nature, by science, by logic. But they were designed for the unbeliever. But the recipient of miracles, signs, and wonders are the believers, because we're the ones that should have the faith that, that, would, that can see and perform miracles through the power of Christ. You know, as Peter and John entered the synagogue to pray, and there was a lame man, Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And, and so therefore that man walked into the temple with them that day. Again, we may need a little bit of a reset. Jesus said that when when the disciples could not cast out the demons out of the man and ask, why couldn't we do this? Jesus said, this does not come but by much prayer and fasting. Power comes, ladies and gentlemen, through prayer 
and through fasting, and we need it you know, in the 21st century. We need a good discipline of prayer and fasting, because I promise you, if you will get in a healthy discipline of prayer and a healthy discipline of fasting, and of course, reading your word, studying the Bible, I promise you the reset that you need to turn on that anointing, to turn on that power is coming. Now, that's a little bit about prayer and fasting, and now let's get into the power of the written word. You know, it's again, we've got to realize something. This don't belong to us. This is not us. This is not me. It's not you. It's not uh, who we are. It's not the reputation that we have built. It all it belongs to God. So anything that you accomplish, anything that you uh, conquer, get victory over, to God be the glory for all that he has done. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12 says, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. When you know the truth, the truth is going to set you, set you free. So you see, there's power in the written word of God. We need to be Pentecostal in our experience and apostolic in our doctrine, in our study of the word of God. When you know the truth, the truth's going to make you free. We need to know what the Bible says and to stay strong in our walk with God. Let me tell you something, folks. There is, there is, and I know you know it, uh, it's obvious, if, you, if you're in the church any time at all, you will understand there is an onslaught of, of, of evil in our world. We are really, truly living in the last days of time. And, and the enemy is going to try to destroy the church any way he can. And so if there ever was a day that the church needs to reset, the church needs to be a first century church in the 21st century, it is right now. Because God, God's powerful, more powerful in you than anything in this world. So we need to know the Bible. We need to know the Word of God, not go on feelings and, and of course, not go on what we think. It doesn't matter what you think. It all matters what God thinks. So let's talk about in our, in our reset, reset about the spirit of unity. That, tw- that first century church knew what unity was. They understood the purpose of unity among them. Unity is power. Unity is when everyone is pulling in the same direction, on board with the mission, have got the heartbeat of God in them, and understand that we have got to sacrifice and make it happen. The Bible speaks that they have all things common. You see, in the early church, they sold their goods and gave to the, to them that had need so that Everyone is equal. Everyone has their needs met. There was a couple here. And now let's, let's talk about the, the power and the spirit of unity. Let's talk about being in unity with what God has for us. There was a couple in the Bible who sold property, and uh, they were supposed to give all that money to the church to finance this, this purpose, Okay. But the couple lied. They kept back part of the money uh, for themselves and then told the apostles that they gave everything. One went in to give an account, lied, and then died. And so the other went into the tent to, to give an account, and they warned them, you're going to be just like your spouse if you don't tell the truth. And they lied, and they both died. Folks, don't mess with God. Don't mess with his church, 
and don't mess with the unity of the church. Do you realize that the first century church numbered around 10,000 people? I mean, after all, the first day they had a prayer meeting, 3,000 received the Holy Ghost. And then the next time recorded was 5,000. That's 8,000 people right there. The next time it mentioned on people receiving the Holy Ghost, it said the multitude received the Holy Ghost. So it was somewhere in the neighborhood of about 10,000 people. They went from house to house, small groups. They broke bread together. They fellowshiped together. They, they did life together. And in the space of two years, they reached all of Asia. I'm telling you folks, we need a reset. We need to be a first century church in the 21st century. We need to fast. We need to pray. We need to read our Bibles. We need to study to show thyself approved, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. We need the DNA of, of God in our life. We need the word of God DNA in ourselves. And we need a reset in our mind, soul, body, and spirit. You see, people is what brings people to church, relationships. Folks, we got to understand something. I'm going to make a real bold statement. We will never compromise the Word of God, but we will get, the, get in the 21st century of the delivery of the Word of God. Well, you know, back then, in those days, uh, they reached all of Asia in two years. They, they, they had a growth track that just was incredible. But guess what? They didn't have church apps. They didn't have websites. They didn't have social media. They didn't have radio, television, YouTube, or any of that. It was totally word of mouth. It was totally one fellowshipping with another. It was totally these people traveling, Paul and all the apostles, going different places and preaching the gospel. And so again, folks, they just did life together, and God, God blessed. The, the Bible says that the Lord added to the church daily, daily, as such should be saved. So people are what brings people to church. It's simply based on relationships. Now, again, in the 21st century, we have those tools, social media and websites and church apps and YouTube and emails and, and all of that we have a, a, at our disposal. But what really counts is a relationship, not only a relationship with God, but a relationship with each other. So we've got to love God. We've got to grow in our faith. We need to serve others and we need to go change the world. I am so glad that you listened here to True North Podcast today. And thank you for joining us. Go to our website at truenorthdfw.org. Join our mailing list. Catch me on social media. Follow us. We're excited about what God is doing in your life. And God bless you. Share this podcast with us. And we'll see you next week. Thank you for joining us at True North Podcast. You can find us on iHeartRadio or any other podcasting platform. If you want to have any questions, visit us at truenorthdfw.org. We'll catch y'all next week.